Before there was Dan, there was me. Today we're in Florida. We're gonna make our own hurricane to wind test fences. Everybody talks about how strong their fences are, but nobody really shows it. And we're gonna do it with this. We have to answer the question, why are we doing this? The reason is, is because we wanna know. The most common question we get down here in Florida is, what's it gonna be rated for? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. The manufacturer tells you what it's rated for. We don't need to do this. How did they test that? I have no idea. Did they test different scenarios of set depth and how deep it is and how much concrete you use? Did they test any of that? We don't know. Today, we're not gonna guess at what makes a good strong fence. We wanna show you, even as a 30 year veteran to this industry, I have no idea how they come up with these wind load ratings. It's just a little line on every brochure that says our fence is rated for X. Today, we're gonna find out, do certain things matter? What really got me to thinking about all this is when I lost a fence project recently to somebody that said that their fence was rated for Miami-Dade wind load rating. <laughs> probably the most infamous wind load rating in all of Florida. Something like 120, don't quote me on that, I don't know. But to get that wind load rating, you have to do a lot of stuff. You have got to put aluminum inside each one of these posts, inside each one of these rails, inside each one of these pickets. So for somebody to claim that their fence is rated to Miami-Dade is just absolute falsehood. So I called up our manufacturer, the one that we use, and I said, what's the wind load rating? And they said, probably about 75 miles an hour, which is where most manufacturers rate their fences. We're gonna find out today. To get that 75, you've got to have the correct installation. And most people in Florida aren't using good installation techniques, which is why you see so many fences that look like this after a slight wind hits them. There's a lot of loose soil. They're barely set in the ground. I've got tons of evidence of this stuff all over our Facebook and TikTok pages of people setting fences poorly. Most of them can be ripped out by hand, and that is not going to give you any kind of wind load rating whatsoever. We've done our best to replicate different scenarios that will lead maybe to different results as far as wind load rating. So I could do the least amount of work and still have a fence that is rated for 75 mile per hour winds. Yeah, potentially, because when we start driving posts, you know what everybody tells us? We're lazy, we're doing it wrong, we're cutting corners. But is that true? Fencing's hard work, and if we can make it easier at the same time making it better for the customer, then I'm 100% on board with doing that. So to do all this, we called in a little bit of help. And I said a little, that's probably not right. We called in a lot of help. So we called in John Wathy, who is, where are you out of, John? Cape Coral, Florida. Cape Coral, Florida. You know anything about hurricanes? Just went through one. And uh, how many fences are still standing? Zero. Now I am not here to say that we can build a hurricane rated fence. An ax of God, like a tornado runs over a fence. I'm just like, I'm sorry. But we can, we can at least get it to where 40 mile an hour breeze doesn't blow it over. And that's what we see a lot of is 40 mile an hour breezes, which is what we'd call them in Wyoming will lean fences terribly. So the reason you have this boat is for your tour company. What's the name of that tour company? Alligators Unlimited Airboat Tours. Out of Lake Wales, Florida. So if you're coming to Orlando and you're looking for a really good tour and you wanna just get out on an airboat and check out some alligators, maybe be fed to alligators, I mean feed the alligators, yeah. then you wanna check these guys out. Airboatnaturetours.com. So definitely check them out if you're in the Orlando area. They're gonna give you a great tour, great family, and they've got way bigger boats than this. This is the baby. This is a small one which we're hoping we can get 100 mile an hour winds out of. That's our goal. I think so. So you're probably thinking now, how are we gonna determine how fast the wind's blowing? That's where this comes into play. This is called an anim animima, um, an animama, animometer. An animometer. Animometer. Anima anim animeter. So with this, we should be able to see exactly how much wind we can generate with this airboat to put against the fence. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna destroy some stuff and we're gonna get the data behind it. I bet I can blow on this harder than you can. How do I record this? Okay, for science sake, we should all blow on the same one. You spit on me. 26.73. That's weak. I just want you to know I have asthma. I automatically get five miles an hour. Okay, blow. Oh wait, hold on. It's not on max. You just wasted my good breath. That was my good breath. We're ready now. 25.24. And I get five, so I won. I'm asthmatic. Self-proclaimed. That was super weak. 16.86. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> that was even worse. What did you do wrong? Wow. That was 10.8. You're blowing the wrong way. There's an arrow in here saying you're blowing the wrong way. Yeah, no, you had it the right way. It's, you just really suck at this. <laughs> oh, I did. I huffed and I puffed and I got it up to 32.8. <laughs> Hey, let's blow some fence over. This is enough of this crap. Hey, can we get on with this? Cause my eyes are getting hot. My eyes are getting really hot in me. Yeah, let's uh, let's see what it'll do.
Oh, that feels like Wyoming. So how much more can you go? Just kind of slowly ramp us up. Here's a hundred, I got a hundred too. If you got max, that's a hundred. That's one zero zero. Yeah, we got a hundred miles an hour right here. Just so you know, I can't blow that with my face. Man, let's do the first one. The first test we were doing is on a six foot tall, eight foot wide section set two feet deep. And down here it has, you can see that 1-60 means there's one 160 pound bag of concrete in each one of these holes. It was soup, so the concrete's not the best concrete in the world by any means, not giving us the best yield strength. But this is typical of Florida fence installers. They're using 160 pound bag on every post. Some of them are doing three feet deep, which we have a couple sections down will be three feet deep, but this one is only two feet deep. And we're calling this a poorly set vinyl fence, something resembling what you'd see when a fence is leaning. So let's see what it can do. Okay. We got it to 99. She leaning, she leaning hard, and that's exactly why all these fences lean. All the concrete in most cases goes in the hole with loose dirt. Nobody's tam tamping anything. It's just get it in there, maybe a little light pack, and then that's it. And so that's why fences lean. You can see that post is leaning like crazy. But you're saying you got 100, huh? Mine says 99.8. Wind is not always straight. Wind can change. In hurricanes, you could get north, south, east, and west winds all in the same thing. So it could run a circle on every one of your fences. And that's what's so devastating. So now what he's going to do is he's going to kick that rudder, direct, change the direction of the wind a little bit. We're going to see how this affects the remaining section. I don't know what I got. I forgot to Beat the crap out of me. Hey, you got some stuff oh, going on, on the real backside out. here. We definitely have some kinkage here. Wow. All these posts you could pull out very easily. Surprisingly, I'm going to say this. I am absolutely shocked the fact that the fence didn't kink faster. Something to think about when you're talking about that, though, is how brittle is the vinyl. These, these posts didn't break. They actually just kinked and not actually broke. And that's probably what broke this rail here is when this post kinked over. So wind direction makes a huge difference. The minute he starts kicking that rudder and changing how the wind's blowing and which direction it's coming from, think of being in a neighborhood and you get those swirling winds, that's when everything falls apart. And we start losing fences at much lower wind speeds than when it's just straight on and it's a nice, steady, consistent wind. That makes all the difference in the world, don't you say? Hello? I wasn't really listening to you. I was just staring at that. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening. What do you think? I would agree. Yeah. And what I was saying earlier is in a hurricane situation, we have winds that basically circle. You could be on the leading edge, the trailing edge, the leeward side, the windward side. And so it basically throughout the 24 hour part of the day, you could have winds coming out of east, north, south and west. So it's not continuous from one direction. It's constantly changing. And that's what's devastating. Man, now I'm having fun. This is fun. And this post is trashed. This concrete, this concrete's not getting the job done. Oh yeah, that was, wow. Look how easy that comes out. That's exactly what we're seeing. Where the hurricane just came through, uh, exact same thing. We're going back, pulling the post and replacing the fence. And it's literally that easy. This is typical failure. I would attribute all that to very poorly set posts. The other comment we get on our channel is, why do you use so much concrete? As you know, if you watch our channel, we stab the post inside the concrete. So there's concrete inside the post, outside the post. And if the post doesn't fold over, that post is in exactly the same spot after the windstorm as it was before the windstorm. Big difference. The amount of concrete as well. We basically figure a tenth of a yard per hole. That would take probably five 60 pound bags to get a tenth of a yard per hole. When people ask us, why do you use so much dang concrete? Because we're trying to do things right when we do sediment concrete. Okay, earplugs, let's do it again.
Next up, we have a six foot tall, eight foot section set two feet deep, one 60 pound bag. And when I say set well, what I'm referring to is, is that when we set the concrete in there, when we had dirt at the bottom of the post, we tamped that down. Then we put the concrete in there wet, had that all in there good. And then the little bit of dirt that we put in at the top of the post, we packed all that down. So that's what I mean when I say set well. And this is by Florida standards. This is not by SWI standards. So that's what well set means. Now, I did use the faux pas tape measure and that's why you're probably looking at it saying, hey, this looks like an eight foot section. This looks like a six foot section. We intended to have both these be eight foot, but those numbers really don't mean anything on our faux pas tape measure. So we ended up having a six foot, but that's great because we'll be able to see what a six foot section does compared to an eight foot section and whether or not there's any difference. All the U-channel is screwed off on both sides. There is no rail locks in the top rails. So what I'm noticing with mine is, is the second this blows apart, all this wind starts rushing through and I get that high reading. Right before it broke apart, I had a lower wind reading of around like 50, 60. So you'll see on mine, I've only got about 60 mile an hour winds. I was above the fence where all the air was flowing past it. They had higher winds down low. Mine was only at 60 miles an hour when this thing blew apart. Big difference. I think that's why we saw that rated so high. I don't think that fence is rated that high. I think if we put that thing back together, cause this is set well. Now let's look and see. Oh yeah, There's she's leaning. in the middle here. You can see, same thing. And we kinked that post over right here. This post is kinked, same thing. That was 60 mile an hour wind up here. Number two is definitely not hurricane rated. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this and I'm gonna hold mine high so that we get that rush past and you guys keep yours low and I won't get that peak reading. I think that's more accurate. So just to prove to you that these don't come out, like I cannot get this thing to come out right now. It is, it is not coming out. So the next test on this one is going to be six foot tall, six foot wide sections set three feet deep. Now there's one caveat. This U channel is screwed off. This U channel over here is not, it's floating. We'll see if it makes a difference when this panel blows apart versus this one, given the fact that the U channel is screwed on this side and it isn't on this side. Let's do it. I didn't see a difference u channel screwed or not screwed, did you? It looked like they both went at the same time. But I got 76.8 miles an hour, which is, I would consider tropical storm rating. And that's what most manufacturers will tell you that their unaltered, basically virgin systems are good for. So this is making sense. Now down here, he got 93. And Dan, you got 110? 110. Right before that, I was holding around 78. So, and that's, makes perfect sense. It's kinked. This one's one 60 pound bag, and now, I can pull the post out. This is the post I tried to pull earlier. Let's see if I can pull it. This one's still set pretty good, but I can pull it. It did loosen it for sure, because I got it to it, come up. It kinked lower here. Instead of kinking up here, it kinked down low, close to the ground. It did, yeah, the kink's a lot high, uh, a lot lower, and that's what you expect when you have something that's set firmly. Like if we have concrete, we expect the post to kink right at the top of the concrete. If we're set in soil, we expect the kink to actually be lower in the soil because there's nothing firm there, so it kinks lower, and we're gonna see that kink probably occur about that far below the soil on a driven post. The better set it is, the lower the kink is. It makes perfect sense. I don't think U-channels made a difference. I still like screwing them off though because it does hide that unsightly gap. You don't get that air gap and stuff. It just looks better. Ooh, I bet this fence isn't gonna be rated for very much wind at all. I bet we kink some posts here. That's gonna be next. Eight foot fence, six foot sections, three rails. We did put the rail in the middle. There are versions of this where the rail's up here. What we wanted to show was the strongest version possible and that would be putting the rail where the most flex is capable and that's right here in the center of the panel. So we used a little more material to do that but wanted to give it the best chance. So eight foot tall, six foot wide, set three feet deep, two 50 pound bags of quick set concrete in each one of these holes. So they're all the way up. So they should be set very well. I can't pull it out. No, I bet we lose it at 50.
That's... So the highest I could get it was 60 miles an hour. It doesn't surprise me that this kinked over. It does surprise me a little bit that this didn't blow apart, but we've got a lot of really good reinforcement here. These are really tight holes, so the rails went in there super tight, which means even though we don't have rail locks, we have really good crimps that are holding this. Like we had to fight to get the rails in these super tight holes, so that makes a huge difference how sloppy or tight the holes are even routed. Did the post pull out? I don't know, the whole thing's heavy. No, this is... <laughs> They're not pulling oh, they're, out. They're coming. Yeah, they, they got it. I got mine. They're not a little wobbled out and loose, but they did break free. One caveat, we did set this the Satcrete recommended way where we put it in there dry and then just added water. Uh, that was as per the bag. Uh, take that for what you will. Here again, we kinked pretty low to the ground. Yeah, so they're set good. You know, those first ones were, were, were a lot looser all said and done, and they kinked higher. And I think that was probably a bit because the ground was giving so much. So that was a good day. Next time, we're going to test the driven system with no concrete. So stay tuned for that, hit your notifications, tell us what you thought of this and what we did wrong below. That concludes today's test on vinyl posts set in concrete. Now, if you wanna see how we set posts in concrete, check out this video right over here. And if you wanna see how we do our driven post system, no dig, check out the video over here. Until next time, I'm Mark with SWI Fence. I'm Alan. I'm Dan. And you have a good dang day.